Welcome to Digging Deep with Pastor Sammy and Dio Okunson. We hope this message encourages you and builds your faith. Join us weekly as we dig deep into God's Word. Hallelujah. Welcome again to our weekly Bible study online, Digging Deep. We are the deep calls to the deep. We are we take adventure in the Word of God. I am Pastor Yemi Ogunsoya from one of the pastors at Faith Chapel. And once again with me tonight uh, on this wonderful evening is uh, our pastor, Pastor Dayo Ogunsoya. You are welcome. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to advise you, if you have missed any of the previous broadcast, you can go on the YouTube channel or on Spotify and uh, catch up with us. We don't have time to go back and touch on everything we have said, but they will benefit you. They will be a blessing to you. Tonight, we are going to continue in the series uh, that we started three weeks ago on is healing for all. Is healing for all. And we have dwelt for three consecutive weeks now on the subject of healing. And tonight, we're going to go uh, continue on looking at Jesus and the various healings in the Bible, in the gospel. And we want to see how the apostles did it. And we want to learn, is there a common ingredient? Is there something that we need to be working on? Last week we spoke about faith. Uh, but hey, I'm just putting the, 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 the cart before the horse. Uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Amen. Always, always. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you one more time Amen. for the opportunity to be here tonight to share your word with your people. Yes, Lord. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son Amen. to take care of our healing, yes. to make sure that we are healed. Yes, Lord. Daddy, we appreciate you. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, again tonight, we we'll receive down. your ministry. Yeah of teaching. Teach us the word of God. Ah. Show us the heart of God. Amen. Open our eyes Amen. of understanding Amen. to know what God has in stock for us mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now grab your Bible, your iPad, whatever you, you, wherever you have your Bible, and let's get in the word. Tonight, like I said, we are going to look into the scripture and see the various ways of, uh, I call it the practical side of the teachings we've been doing. So we see how Jesus did it. We see how the apostles did it. We, and we see how you can, you have to do it. Amen. Amen. Let's start with Matthew tonight. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9 from verse 28 to verse 30. This is the story of two blind men. You want to read it for I, us? Yes, I can. When he had come to the other side, uh, Matthew chapter 9, okay, verse 28 to 30, oh. Matthew 9. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Oh. And they said to him, oh. Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, mm. let it be to you. Amen. Amen. This is an amazing story. Jesus this, met these two blind men. They followed him, uh, crying after him. He didn't do anything. But when he got home, they came home with him. Mm. See, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I, I love Jesus. He allowed people to come home with him. Amen. <laughs> so he asked them this question. And that's where we left off last week. He said, do you believe that I am able to do this? Mm -hmm. It's not a question of uh, is, is the will of God? Yeah, it's the will of God. We've dealt with that. Does Jesus, did he have the authority and power? Yes. But do they believe? Mm -hmm. That's the third ingredient. They must know the will. We must uh, uh, understand authority and power, and then we have to believe that Jesus is the healer. Mm -hmm. They told him, yes, Lord, 
And then it touched their eyes. Look at what he said. He said, according to your belief, according to your faith, according to your faith. He didn't say according to my power. According to your faith. You said you believe, receive. And their eyes were open. Amen. So there is one ingredient in the gospel that's always present in almost all the healing accounts in the gospel is called the uh, is called the ingredient of faith. Mm -hmm. And you you are or you were right on it last week, and then we are just gonna move on, on uh, through it this week again. Amen. The main thing is to understand that God is not holding back on us. God is not holding back. He is not the one who determines how long it takes for us to receive our healing. Mm -hmm. It is okay, carpet will get his own in two weeks. Ah, Itua will get his own in three months. Mm -hmm. Each one determines. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, what do we do? He wants you well, absolutely, instantly. If he can have it, he, can, he wants you well now. Mm -hmm. But the amount of faith that is working in us determines the length or the time for our healing to manifest. Amen. Amen. Now, most often in the scripture, we see that Jesus asks people this question. If to, he wants to find out what they were believing. And I, I, I studying Kenneth e. Hagin, I discovered he does the same thing. You see, we ask them, what scripture are you standing on? What are you believing God for? Some will say, well, no scripture. And they will tell them that's what you get, zero. Hmm. Because you need, the faith comes by hearing the word. And faith is a required ingredient in healing. And you can only get faith in God from the word of God. So you have to get in the word. You have to meditate the word. You have to confess the word. You have to believe the word. And you have to uh, keep exalting the word of God above the pain in your body. Now, let's look at the story of the man by the pool of Bethsaida. Mm -hmm. The man that has been there for 38 years. That's um, John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Five. Mm -hmm. uh, John chapter 5. And verse 6. Uh, John chapter 5. We can, uh, because of time, we could have read the whole thing, but let's just look at verse 6. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Uh -huh. In the King James Version, he said, do you want to be healed? Mm. That's the question. And this man flunked the, the question. He gave the wrong answer. And many believers today are giving the wrong answer. They are saying, oh, that's, it, it's, it's, that's the way it's been in my family. The question is, do you want to be healed? And this man was telling Jesus the story, the lowdown of how long he's been there, mm -hmm. how there was nobody to help him. But G thank God for the mercy of God. Uh, God, Jesus was able to tell him now, okay, I am the helper. Take your bed and go home. Mm -hmm. So Christ, the healer, is in us. This, this is where the dynamics has changed. He located the man, but is in me, is in you today. And the healing that we are looking for is in us. Hmm. That, that fact must be ingrained in us. I am not looking to God to come and heal me. God has already healed me. The healer is in me, in the person of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Ah, we are carrying around in our person Jesus everywhere. The healer everywhere. So there is no reason if I, if, for me not to be able to manifest my healing. Now remember Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 4 verse 2 said, they had the word, mm -hmm. but it did not profit them because, because they did not miss. It. There was an ingredient that was missing. Mm. The ingredient of faith. faith. And Hebrews eleven six said, those that come to God mm. must is a requirement. There is no other way around the, 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 the ingredient of faith. Mm. We have to believe. We have to believe uh, that healing is available and healing has been purchased for us. And we have, last week we spoke about releasing that healing. So this week we are just going to round up on it on the various ways. What about point of contact? Uh, you want to talk to us about that? Uh, because we see people 
laying hand. I do that a lot because I see it in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus was always touching people and releasing faith in them and releasing healing to healing. manifest. Yes, yeah. releasing his healing to yeah. them. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 29 talks yeah. about one of the points. Yeah. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for yeah. 12 years yeah. and had suffered for many th and suffered many things from many physicians. Yeah. She had spent all that she had mm -hmm. and was no better, but rather yeah. she grew worse. Wow. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Next verse. What she said. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Mm. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried uh -huh. up, and she felt in her body that, that she, she was, was healed, healed of, of the affliction. Ha, ha, ha. This is uh, a dimension of healing that we want to look at. Now, if one thing I want to point out, the first thing I want to say, Jesus did not touch this woman. She touched him. Jesus did not, she did not even touch the body of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We are talking of receiving or manifesting healing using point of contact. This woman was sick. Jesus didn't visit her house. She heard about Jesus. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. She heard that the healer is in town. She heard the various stories of how people, the blind man, the one by the pool of Bethsaida, how Jesus was healing people, were going around healing, setting free people that were oppressed of the devil. This woman, she has spent everything she had on doctors, medical tests. Mm. She has become very poor. The Bible says she grew worse. And by Jewish law, she was not supposed to go out because the kind of sickness she had did not permit her to mingle with people. She's been hemorrhaging for 12 years. Mm. But she made up her mind by faith that she's going to get near Jesus. She's going to release her faith by touching his outer coat. Mm -hmm. And she wriggled her way there, got close enough to Jesus, touched the hem of his garment, and something flew from Jesus to her. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what we are looking at tonight. F our faith connected with the anointing. Faith is the common ingredient in all this healing. And you have it, I have it. If not, we cannot be born again. Mm -hmm. But you will need to feed that faith by sitting with the word of God, meditating on it, and acting out whatever instruction the Holy Spirit gave us. And I think uh, prior to that uh, verse 25, mm -hmm. let me quickly look. That's, uh, the Bible said that she was, she had heard yeah. about Christ. Yeah. So it, it, it's not only that, oh, there's a guy called Jesus that she heard. She heard about the things that Jesus was doing. About Christ, the anointed She one. heard about the anointing. Yeah, she this, heard this. about who Christ was. Yeah. So she knew Christ. Yeah. She, not that she, so her, her faith came, and it's the same thing with us today. Yeah. Faith comes by yeah. hearing. So she had heard, and I want to submit to you that if, even if she didn't touch the hem of his garment, if it was his sleeve that she touched, the same she thing would still have, have been healed. Yeah. Be it, it's not because, oh, you know, because people will be going around, okay, let me touch the hem. Any part of Jesus was anointed, people, but it was by her faith. Yes. That's very important because now Peter made a statement when Jesus said, who touched me? Mm. He said, for I perceive virtue or power has gone out of me. And Peter said, sir, Everybody is pressing on you. Yes. And you are saying, who touched you? Can't you? It's not a question of, they are trying to crush you. <laughs> but it's a different touch. Mm -hmm. The woman came with a determination. Yes. She came in faith. People were pressing on Jesus, but there was no faith in that touch. And the other thing that I want to point out about this woman, she had imagined herself. Because oh, yeah. she kept, the Bible, another translation says she kept saying yeah. to herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, yeah. I will be made whole. Yeah. You know, she, she had already imagined herself that if I can do this, 
she had already seen herself healed. Yeah. And imagination is a very important part of yeah. our healing. Yeah. Faith will bring, because when we look at the scripture, for us to get anything out of the scripture, we must paint a picture yeah. out of it. Mm. So the picture that she painted from what she had heard mm. was the picture of her being whole. Yeah. So it was so easy for her. That's the reason she didn't have to, or Jesus didn't have to touch her. She was so already in faith. She had already seen the picture of herself being healed, yeah. being made whole, that all she needed to do was to touch. Yeah, how do I get there? Because maybe you are at home tonight and you are wondering, okay, I want to be this woman. I want to be like her. Mm. I want to be able to touch. I want faith to be at work in me. You don't get there in one day because that scripture says she has had. Mm -hmm. And last week we spoke about the power of meditation. Mm -hmm. Meditation. Now, when Moses left and uh, jo Joshua was being commissioned mm -hmm. to take the Israelites to the promised land, he asked God for the success formula. Mm -hmm. You always ask, when you are going to be put in the spotlight, you ask for what you know you don't know. Mm -hmm. So he told God, how am I going to do it? And God told him, meditate on my word, day and night, so that you can observe to see. That's what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. When you camp mm -hmm. in the word of God, the word of God open your inner eyes. You begin to see. That's where imagination mm -hmm. begins to work. Mm -hmm. You begin to see what the Bible says becoming reality in your body. That's what the state the woman was. She kept saying and saying to herself, thinking about it, if I can just get close to him and I'm able to touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Mm -hmm. This blood issue will stop. I believe, she believed it so much we don't, the Bible didn't tell us for how long she was meditating on mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And that faith, force of faith, mm -hmm. pushed her to go and touch Jesus and the healing manifested. Amen. So you too can do it, my friend, my sister, my brother. You can do it. We are not talking of magic. The word mm -hmm. of God works for anybody, yes, everybody. Sir. Yes, sir. Get two, three scriptures, even if it's only one. Isaiah 53, sit on it for a number of days. Think about it. Meditate on it. Say it out to yourself. Thank God for it. Something will happen inside you. That instruction will come from it. And your healing will manifest. Amen. 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 Before we go tonight, let's talk about... Uh, because as a pastor, we have done that. Uh, I have prayed over clothes. I, I, I have... Uh, in, in, there was a time I used to pray over the chairs in the church. When I come during the week, lay hands on all the chairs and speak prosperity, speak blessing. We, the person who is going to sit on this on Sunday, they will experience the peace of God. What are we doing? Why are we doing that? Now, clothes is a conductor of the anointing. Mm -hmm. That's why the anointing that was on Jesus was also on his clothes. And the woman understood that, that He's anointed. He doesn't even need to touch me. The clothes he's wearing carries, is already in contact with the anointing. Mm -hmm. If I can just touch the clothes, I will connect with that power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul did that in Acts chapter 9, 11. Let's quickly read that. Acts chapter 19, verses we read 11. verses 11 to 12. Okay. So you know it's not just Jesus. Now, the Bible said God walked. So is God walking. Is the same grace of God, the power of God, worked unusual, in other words, uncommon miracles mm. by the hands of Paul. How? So that and even handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body. Mm -hmm. They touch, either he lays hand or they use them to touch his body. And they take those things to the sick and the diseases, they will leave those who are sick. Even evil spirits left. Amen. That shows the power of the anointing. Amen. Amen. So, uh, it's God's power. It's called the anointing. But it's, we are talking of healing by point of contact. Uh, in our time, we have seen God do that. I've given my jacket to people to wear. And I tell them, I just finished ministry. This jacket is soaked 
is soaked with my sweat, is soaked with the anointing. You put it on, and I want to see the devil that will stay. It's the same thing. We are talking of how healing manifested. The woman touched Jesus. You can touch Jesus today. Mm -hmm. He's in you. Amen. You don't need a physical touch. It's a spiritual touch today. Amen. And your pastors, if they believe in healing, thank God Pastor Dario and Pastor Yemi believe they can pray over you and pray over clothes and you can use it for your children. Amen. 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 What other way do we have healing? Last week we spoke about the gifts of healing. Mm. There, are, there are vessels that, I mean, men and women that God has called and has given the grace to heal specific sickness and diseases. Mm. Maybe some is uh, blindness. There's, you see more of blindness, uh, uh, blind eyes being uh, open in their ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, those are gifts, manifestation. That's the Holy Spirit working through human vessel. But the one I want us to dwell on tonight as we close is the Holy Communion. Amen. Because in our church, we take the Holy Communion. Mm. And thank God, uh, this woman of God ministered two Sundays ago on the power of the Holy Communion. You want to talk to us about that? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so another way to receive our healing is through the, the, you know, the taking of the communion, the blood and the, and the body oh, of Christ. Yeah. You see, the, the body of Jesus is the New Testament manna. Yeah. Remember in, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, uh, they gave them, the Lord gave them manna yeah. to eat, yeah. to help them go through. Yeah. You know, but the, the, the body of Christ is more superior. Mm -hmm. Than, than because that body was the one that was broken for us. Yeah. The body that was taken and broken for us. So when we take the Holy Communion, the body of Christ goes into our body and gives us strength. The, 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 when we eat the Holy Communion, we begin to, you know, we begin to have an experience of being strong. You know, it, we, 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 it, it takes out every imbalance in our systems. Mm. It takes out sicknesses and diseases mm. from our body. Mm. You know, it neutralizes it. And the blood of Jesus Christ, when we take it, according to the scriptures, when we take the blood of, of Christ, according to uh, mm. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 talks about it, that as often as we take it, when we take it, we get supernatural infusion. Mm. I used an example of dialysis the other time. You know, when you, when people who, who have uh, kidney failure and they need to get dialyzed mm. because of the fact that the, 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 the toxins are backing up in their body. Mm. So they go for dialysis. The dialysis machine will take out their blood, purify it, clean it up, and then put it back into their bodies. Mm. But what this, the, the blood of Jesus is even more potent it's than that one. Fire. It does not take, take your blood and recirculate your blood. It takes out your blood, the, the toxins in your blood, and brings his own into your body. And that is blood. It's pure. The blood of Jesus is pure. So when it runs through your body, it flushes out every impurity, every toxin that is in your body. That is how powerful the blood of Jesus Amen. is. Amen. It is called spiritual transfusion. Mm. And, and I said when I was talking about it that medically many or almost every disease is traceable to the blood. Mm. Almost all disease. That's why they take your blood. That's the why they, 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 the other day I went to the doctor a, a couple of weeks ago. They took my blood. When the phlebotomist was taking my blood, I was like, is there anything remaining? Because, you know, like six vials or seven vials. <laughs> and, and today my doctor called me and said, everything is perfect yeah. in your blood. Your, your blood, your your sugar, everything is good. And she kept telling cholesterol, everything is good. Why? Because the blood of Jesus has gone ahead and taken out anything that could yeah. be impure yeah. inside of me. Yeah. So that is what the blood of Jesus does. Every disease, every sickness that is in your blood, when you take the communion, mm. you, it takes out everything Amen. From it. Amen. So, the next time you go to church, if you attend Faith Chapel, make sure you participate. It is understanding 
that brings uh, that makes the uh, Christianity uh, profitable. Yes. When you do something and you know why you are doing it, you get the benefit of it. We have spoken today about various ways, uh, forms of healing. We have spoken about sp using authority, using the name of Jesus. We've seen uh, making contact with the anointing. We've seen uh, the Holy Communion, which is uh, blood infusion in your body, uh, uh, the, the body that was broken so that yours can be put together. Uh, mm -hmm. All those things are put together, uh, makes us to be able to fulfill our destinies, living long and living strong. It is God's will for us, and he has, uh, for us to be well, and he has made provisions available for us in the New Testament to manifest this. It is now our responsibilities uh, to get in on this, get in the world, get in faith, and stand in faith, exalting the word of God above sickness and diseases. Our prayer and our desire is that you will, you will finish well. Amen. You will get to your destination. Amen. And that no sickness or disease will evict you out of your heart suit. Mm -hmm. This body belongs to you. God gave it to you. You have to protect it for as long as you desire to. Remember, death, uh, God is not the one controlling death. Mm -hmm. We are now in charge. Paul said, I was in a, in a fix between two. Do I die or do I stay? He said, I don't know. He made the decision and said, I'm going to stay. That means death doesn't have authority over a child of God. You determine when you want to live. But in, when you don't make a decision, it's making a decision. Mm. Indecision is decided. Mm. Amen. Mm. All right. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. It's such an honor to, to understand this. Mm. I mean, the little that we understand. Oh, my goodness. The word of God is so powerful. Yeah. It's, so, it's so fulfilling. It, it makes, you know, it just gets me excited mm. when I catch a revelation mm. from the word of God. Mm. And this revelation of healing is a very big revelation yeah. because yeah. many people are not aware of this. Like mm. when you started, you talked about people, you know, like even people at this age still thinking that their lifespan is supposed to be 17, 17 years. years. Or if they don't get sick, how do they die? How mm. should they die? You don't have to be sick to die. You can just leave. Mm. You know, just like Enoch. <laughs> he didn't have to be sick. Moses was not sick at 120 years mm. old. He was, his vision, the Bible said that his vision was still you know, 2020. Mm. So you can fulfill what God has called you to do and still enjoy long and fulfilling life. Amen. May this be yes. our testimonies Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor, why don't you pray for us? I, I believe tonight, uh, the Bible said in Psalm 120, uh, Psalm 107 verse 20, it said, He mm. sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Yes. Now, right now, is the same word, the same faith, the same law. Yes. We send that word of healing Amen. to as many as desire a touch of heaven tonight. Amen. And we declare from the top of Amen. your head to the soles of your feet, be made whole, Amen. be healed. Amen. Whatever is the affliction, we stop the oppressor in his tracks now. Amen. We remove every Amen. stain of Amen. Satan Jesus. on sickness and disease over your body. Amen. You are the, your body was paid for with the stripes of Jesus. Be made whole, be free, walk in freedom all the days of your life. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Amen. Thank you for listening. And if you've enjoyed today's message, why don't you like and subscribe to receive the latest message to keep you encouraged and inspired throughout the week. Be a blessing and continue to share God's message with friends. We appreciate you and pray for God's best for your life.